Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our All Saints Day service this Sunday morning. We'd like to welcome all of you who are here with us in person, and we also welcome everyone who is uh, attending church online. We would like to remind all the online attendees to please record your attendance at the service by either calling the church, leaving a message, or emailing if you uh, were able to attend. And this, this is All Faith Sunday, and as you know, normally we would, well, we are still going to do it, um, just in a different manner, we're going to be lighting a candle for our loved ones who have passed away during this year. We will also be, um, we have these electric ones to remember all of um, the loved ones who passed away uh, prior to this year. So if you're at home, um, Please see if you can find a candle to light at the time when we do all of this lighting so that you can be, be participating as we're participating here. We will um, also be doing communion this morning. So if you're at home, please prepare some uh, piece of bread and juice so that you can have communion with us while we're having communion here. And for anyone who's in person, Please be sure you grab your little uh, communion um, baggie with the juice and uh, the wafer in there. The online service will be available around 1 o'clock. Um, we do appreciate your pa patience with this. Um, we continue to move towards live streaming. So what that means is in the future at some point, you will be viewing the same time we are here. So it will be simultaneous and um, not the delay that we have, we have right now. For all the in-person folks, we just always uh, remind you to mask up and social distance. It's very, very hard for us to do that. The masking is uh, less stressful than the lack of uh, personal contact. And I know that uh, Bob and I talk about how much this lack of being in person and visiting and seeing people makes us feel very isolated. So it's good to be able to be here and see you. And we know that we're giving each other these hugs, even if it can't be a real touch. So as we continue into this worship service, Bob, would you please usher in with a prelude?
Thank you, Bob, for beautiful and sacred music. As we, God's people, gathered in person or online, we join with the saints of all the ages in giving glory to our Lord God. So let us join our hearts, souls, strength, and minds as one as we praise to the God of all creation, the God we have come to know in Jesus Christ. So it's time for our hymn of praise. As uh, typical for All Saints Day, um, we're going to be doing for all the saints. It's on 7-Eleven. If you have a hymnal, you know that. But um, I'm doing verses 1, 3, and 5 today. And until we're given the green light to sing, um, I'll be uh, reciting the uh, hymn to you as Bob is playing it. So, for all the things. For all the things who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia. Alleluia. O may thy soldiers, faithful, true, and bold, Fight as the saints who nobly fought of old, and win with them the victor's crown of gold. Alleluia! Alleluia! And when the strife is fierce and the warfare long, the steel's on the ear, the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave, in again, and arms are strong. Alleluia! Alleluia! For all our saints, Amen. Amen. Let us pray opening prayer. In life and in death, you bless us, O God. When trouble overwhelms us, you save us. When sorrow overtakes us, you comfort us. When death overcomes us, you overcome death and raise us to new life. You promise us joy everlasting, and even now give us glad hope and glimpses of your realm, which is to come when Christ makes all things new. For calling us your children and bestowing upon us such a great love, we give you thanks to you. Through your words and the Holy Spirit, comfort those who are grieving the loss of their saints, and com- comfort all of us as we worship you and remember all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is time for children, and I would like to invite children come closer to the monitor or your computer screen. Please come forward. How was your Halloween day yesterday? Did you get a lot of candies? I guess so. You got a lot of candies in your basket. But I warn you that don't eat at once. (laughs) 
your stomach is going to be upset. Yesterday was Halloween, and today is All Saints Sunday. So I would like to let you know what All Saints means. So come closer to the screen and take a look. Halloween is fun for its candy you seek. But did you know it's not the only holiday this week? All Saints Day falls on the 1st of November, and we celebrate it together as a way to remember the saints of the church, both famous and not, for their example of faith and for loving a lot. What is a saint, you might ask your pastor? But I'll answer that question. It's probably faster. Saints are people who love God and others. They see everyone on earth as their sisters and brothers. We give thanks for those who have died this last year. We say their names. We smile. We might shed a tear. And as they sing God's praises, we can join in the chorus by doing for others what the saints have done for us. Be kind. Forgive. Tell other people about the love of God that makes you want to shout, God is great. God is good. God always comes through just like the Bible said God would. So enjoy your candy, but don't forget to say, along with Trick or Treat, Happy All Saints Day. Happy All Saints Day, children. Thank you for coming. This time, uh, Chris Kearns will read us scripture lessons. You didn't hear that. Good to see the people who have been coming and to see people we haven't seen for a while but have been watching the home. I'm going to be reading from 1 John, which is near the end of the New Testament. It was written by John the disciple or apostle who had witnessed all the things Jesus had done. And then I'm going to be reading from Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible in the New Testament. And that was also written by John. And then I'm going to be reading from Matthew, who um, was one of Jesus' disciples also. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, We are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he was pure. This is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude, multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes and the peoples and the languages, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, So blessed are the world to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God. They were saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then all the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in light? And where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, 
Lord, the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they that have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes, or have their white or the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, they worship him day and night within his temple. And when one of us seated on the throne, will shelter them. They will hold our law, or thirst for more, and our sorrow will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb of the Son of the Throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And now Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now, just to stare at the crowds, oh, let me stop for a minute. Thank you. Thank you for standing. This is the famous Sermon on the Mount. When I looked up in my Bible, it said this was one of Jesus' longest, uh, or, or his longest, that they believe, um, talking to the people. And they feel it went over a period of two days. Now, Jesus saw the crowds and walked around him, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are alone, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the weak, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are men, that when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, but just they be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Thank you, Chris. As you watch on the video, all Saints Sunday on November 1st or the first Sunday in November is the day of remembrance for the saints. With the New Testament meaning of all Christian people of every time and space. We celebrate the communion of saints as we remember the dead, both in the church universal and our local congregation. For this reason, we solely read the names of persons in the congregation who have died during the past year. Now, Wendy Meyer, the chairperson of Memorial Committee, will come up and read the names and one representative or friends uh, from his family and friends will come up to the altar and light the candle. Those who want to remember your saints, please prepare your own candle at home. And I will let you know, or Wendy will let you know, when you light the candles in honor and memory of your loved ones. Good morning. We would like to thank all of the families and friends of our deceased loved ones for remembering our church with memorial contributions. In the past year, we received memorial donations in the memory of Emmanuel Nzaga, Howard Svoboda, Bill Sykes, Marty Knott, Cheryl Weary, June Muggenborg, and Joe Forsley. Memorial donations were made to our memorial fund, our food pantry, our maintenance fund, our general fund, and some of our groups, like the Prime Timers. All of the memorial donations help us fulfill our mission. Because of the memorial donations, we were able to assist with the purchase of the new streaming equipment that will bring Sunday services to all who are unable to attend church in person. Thank you so much. 
At this time, we will light a candle in memory of our church members, family members, and friends who have passed away since November 3rd, 2019. If you are here in church and would like to light a candle for anyone who does not have a family member here today, please do so, or pastor will light the candles for you. Jean Phillips, father to Stephanie and Tyler, passed away December 23rd, 2019. Mort Bennett, former pianist in Lamont United Methodist Church, passed away December 24, 2019. Billy Jean Sykes, husband to Mary Jane, father to Sharon, Jana, and William, passed away December 25th, 2019. James Bitters, brother to Joan McKinney, passed away February 3rd, 2020. Reverend Don Leo, husband to Judy, father to John, Susan, Joe, and Peter. He served the Lamont United Methodist Church from 1965 to 1976, passed away March 9, 2020. David Malady, son of Joy Malady, husband to Linda, father to Nicholas, Kristen, and Kevin, passed away June 8, 2020. Marty Knott, husband to Arlene, father to Gregory, Laurel, and Kevin. Marty served as finance chairperson over 30 years and played Nathaniel for 36 years in the Last Supper. He passed away June 8, 2020. June Magenborg, mother to Karen Perino and Richard Magenborg, passed away July 29, 2020. Jay Obley, father to Song Wuli. Father-in-law to Pastor O, passed away August 1st, 2020.
Mary Lee Work, aunt of Tim Perino, passed away September 5, 2020. Cheryl Weary, wife to Stephen, passed away October 4th, 2020. Maureen Robinson passed away September 11th, 2020. Robert Roy Haverman, father-in-law to Cindy Haverman, grandfather to Elizabeth, Charlotte, and Anthony, passed away October 16, 2020. Shirley England, grandmother to Carolyn Stelter, passed away October 21st, 2020. Lawrence Petri passed away October 21st, 2020, grandmother-in-law to Rachel Brocker Hayes. We remember all of our friends who have gone before us. Carrie Jancic, Lenny Caputo, Paul Conrad, Ron Swanson Sr., Rose Zambudo, Doris Gillis. We will light a candle in memory of all of our friends who passed away in the past year. Tim will do this for us. Those of you in the pew, if you'd like to light your candle now. Those of you at home, if you have a candle, Please light it in remembrance of all of our saints who have passed away this year. We will also light a candle for those who died of COVID-19 in 2020. May God give them peace and make them whole. I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul 
I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise, I will rise. There's a day that's drawing near. When this darkness breaks to light And the shadows disappear And my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won he is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise. I will rise And I hear the voice of many angels sing Worthy is the Lamb And I hear the cry of every longing heart Worthy is the Lamb And I hear the voice of many angels sing Worthy is the Lamb, and I hear the cry of every longing heart. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. And I will rise when He calls my name no more sorrow no more pain I will rise on eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise I will rise I will What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved we lived our lives together. Their memories is a blessing forever. Months and years may have passed, and still we feel near them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a dew of pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now with the eye of memory. They are false, forgiven. Their virtues grow larger, so does goodness leave and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever, and we remember as well the members 
school, but yesterday were part of our congregation and our community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task is ours. Your souls are bound up in ours forever, and we give you thanks that they now live and reign with you. And as a great cloud of, cloud of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer you, offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forever in you, so that we give a thanks to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time, Leslie and Phil Ramos will offer special tribute our we rise. Take a look. All Saints Day is one of the most solemn and yet hopeful days of Christian year. This is a day of remembrance. We have lit 16 candles remembering those who have died, who are part of this faith community and our families since the last time we celebrate, celebrated this day. Beyond this, many of you from home lit candles remembering your loved ones who have passed in the past years. It is a solemn day of mourning. For some of you here, the candle you lit is a visual reminder of law, grief of law that you are experiencing in your life. Their loved one's death has been so recent, tearing apart the fabric of relationship and love that your loss is gapping a gapping hole in your life and in your heart. You are still figuring out how you will meet those raw edges together into a new reality, a reality that you would never have had to deal with before. If this is you, I would like to let you know that we are holding you in our prayers during this time of intense grief. Fathers, the deep pain of loss has been replaced by the sweetness of memories. You recall your loved ones, remember your life journey together. And though there is an ache in our heart because of their passing even more, there is a smile, a joy as you remember them. As the past of you, I made this journey with you. I was called before the death of your loved ones. I offered prayers and assured your loved ones before they pass or after passing that everything is going to be well and send them to God. Also, I was called at the time of the death to help you deal with memorial services, to help you to process your loss. Grief has not been easy to deal with. I also lost my father-in-law this year. Yet, some months later, I see you smiling as you tell a wonderful story of a time you had with your loved one. So all things day is a time to remember because memories that you have, you cherish our gift that heals the raw edges of grief. In our thought, the loved one is still alive. 
as we figure out how to live in the future without them physically beside us, we still take them along in our hearts and minds. And somehow those memories begin to dry our tears. So, in that manner, All Saints Day is a day of celebration of how those memories shaped our lives. And also it is a celebration of their faith and our faith. Do you know, we are, we Christians are the people of hope. We grieve our Lord, yet we also have hope because of our faith. We have the hope that in faith we will receive eternal life. We have hope that we will see our loved one again. Today's scripture lesson, especially from Revelation, tells us the reasons why we have to hold on to hope. Revelation is written as a word of encouragement, hope, and comfort to Christians who were struggling with the enormous loss of identity and the threat of losing their independence and even their lives. So Revelation says there is a great multitude from every nation standing before the throne and before the Lamb singing the praises to God. It promises when this happens, there will be no more hunger or thirst. There will be no more pain. The Lamb will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of the water of life. At this moment, the tears will dry up, Why? It is because all of those things that cause us physical and emotional pain and tears are gone. The pain of separation is gone. The fear of want is gone. The limitations of our physical bodies are gone. And so we sing praises and celebrate the joy of being with God. For our loved ones who have gone before us, this is what we believe and hope for they are experiencing. For us, this is what we are looking forward to seeing. This hope enables us to take our first step toward a future that is not defined by our past. Do you know Jesus also specially blessed those who mourn in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4? Jesus calls them blessed. He doesn't say, one day you will be blessed. But blessed are those who mourn, even now and even here. Why? Because blessing is a sense of fullness of contentment, of joy that is like, but also transcends our ordinary happiness. God knows the grief that weighs us down in our heart, the depression or addiction that oppresses us, the challenges we face right now, and our kills, struggles we are contemplating. God sees you. God honors you. God blesses you. And God accompanies you as you walk with those struggles and pain. Moreover, when we struggle, we are not faithless. Many Christians tend to think that when we struggle or doubt or fear, we are letting God down. But that's not true. It is part of our journey that where there is faith, there is also always struggle. So struggle, doubt, 
feeling overwhelmed, wondering if God is out there. These are not signs of failure or lack of faith, but are testimonies of us to profound faith as we wrestle with such deep questions and thereby take God seriously. That's the reason that there are so many laments, psalms in the Bible. And so, when we feel at our most low or wonder if we have lost our faith, God names us among the most faithful. Blessed are those who struggle, for they will be comforted. In this solemn and celebratory All Saints Sunday, dear brothers and sisters, let us hold on to this hope that Jesus promises that He will indeed wipe every tear from our eyes one day, and that Jesus sees our struggles and knows our grief and accompanies us. The cross, as you look at, is the evidence that Jesus died, Jesus suffered and died for us. The empty tomb has been another evidence that Jesus has risen from the dead and defeated death and evil, separation and the pain. And now he's with us, understanding our grief, our story, and Christ with us. It is good news for us. It is the reason we hold on to hope that Jesus gives us. So those who have experienced the loss of loved ones hold on to these promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those whose candles we lit today celebrate that they were people of faith and we will see them again. When we can embrace the journey of life that there is a time to live, time to struggle, and time to die, a time to see our loved ones face to face again, we can celebrate the past and live today safely and face tomorrow on our train. May it be so. Amen. This is time for us to share our joys and concerns. Um, I would like to say happy birthday to those who celebrate their birthdays in November and happy anniversaries to those who celebrate their any kind of anniversaries in this month. Blessings to you. And also there is joy that um, I put the pictures there. Uh, Happy Hands had their Halloween safe parade for two days. You can see the pictures. And it was a brilliant uh, idea and safe way to celebrate Halloween. And I thank you for the leadership of our director, assistant director, and all the hard work of Happy Ends teachers. Thank you. Um, there are prayer concerns because said by uh, all members of our church. Um, Tim Perino asks us to pray for his friend Mike Obermeyer as he struggles from throat cancer for the second time. Please keep Mike Overmeyer in your prayer. And also, Glian Care asks us to pray for her sister, brother, sister in law, and brother in law as they all got COVID 19 and is fighting. Especially, um, Jean, Lina, is um, 
moved to the hospital because of blood clot on her lungs. So keep um, Korean uh, family in your prayer. And also, um, Carol Walker asked prayer for uh, her son-in-law, Darren Monet. Also, he's been fighting with um, COVID and recovering from it. So keep um, Darren Monet in your prayer. And also pray for all those who are fighting with the COVID and for the safety of all as we've been experiencing the second surge. And always wear your um, mask and keep social distance so that we can continue to stay safe. And also, I would like to ask you to pray for our nation as we are having the presidential and general election this coming Tuesday, and also pray for the safety of all people. If you have joys and prayer concerns to share with us, please contact me or contact the church office. Let us pray. Eternal God, author of our past and promise of our future, we lay before you our prayer private fears and our concerns for the world, knowing that you hear our cries. Especially today, we pray for those whom Jesus called blessed, for the poor in spirit, for those who mourn, and for the humble and meek, and for those who thirst and hunger for righteousness for the pure in heart, and for those who show mercy, and those who make peace, and for those who are persecuted because of Christ. Pour out your blessings upon them and us, that we may be strengthened every hardship and joyful at the recognition of every blessing you have given us. We call to mind before you all those who have died, those who taught us the faith, those who spoke your truth in the face of evil, those who cared for the weak and the suffering, and those whom we loved and cherished the most. Thank you that the, their pain is ended and their joy is made complete. Merciful God, we ask for your protection upon this country as it is having the presidential and general election on November 3rd. Your will be done on this country as it is in heaven. We also ask for your help as we have been experiencing the second surge of the COVID-19 in our state, in our nations, and all around the world. Heal and recover those who are fighting with the virus right now. Especially, we name Darren, Gina, Jim, Glenn, Kathy, and all those who are dear to us. Provide strength and make them whole again. We pray for Michael Obermeyer as he is battling throat cancer for the second time. Bring your healing mercy upon, the, upon him and upon those who are in our prayer lists and who are struggling with illness as well. Covenant in God. In baptism, you claim us and show us how to live. Keep us in your care until that day when all creation sings your praise and you lead all your children to the springs of water of life. Through Jesus Christ, our brother, Redeemer, and Lord, we pray. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We share the love and peace with your neighbors. Online folks, peace be with you. We miss you. This time, Pat Pastor will share a story moment. Good morning. <clears throat> the last two weeks, I talked about prayer and reflection and seeing God work in our lives. And last week, I explained some increases in our expenses during the COVID-19 and asked if you might have any other questions. 
Um, does anyone have anything to share or need any questions to answer at this brief? Thank you. Um, this week, I was thinking about the word stewardship. It's not a word we use very often except at this time of the year, like in stewardship moment or being a good steward. So I looked up in the dictionary what Webster had to say about it. There's three definitions. One is a person who looks after the passengers on a ship, aircraft, or train and brings them food. Ergo, stewardess. It's an official appointed to supervise arrangement or keep order at a large public event, like a sporting event. The third definition is a person employed to manage others' property, especially a large house or estate. Hmm. So how are these reflected in our Christian lives? The first definition can be stewarding people. The Bible is filled with examples of how we should treat one another and serve one another. The second is stewarding order. From the beginning, God instructed us to be in charge of creation, everything that he has made. <laughs> that, that's, that's a pretty big deal. And the third definition is to manage property, or dealing with money, possessions, and giving. This one is the definition most steward suited to our stewardship moment. There are over 2,000 Bible verses that deal with money. Bottom line, we must see God as the provider and source of our resources and not the owners. That can be hard to wrap our arms around because we're the ones that are out there working every day. So how does, how does that work? We work and it's uh, not our money. Um, but can you see God in your job? I could, and I, I just want to share something, um, a personal reflection on this. Is when Lee and I got divorced, I was 40. And I had been a, um, a homemaker, and so now I'm going to go out and find a job. I have no college, I have no experience, and I'm wondering how this is going to work. So I, I did get a job, and I lasted about two weeks, and I said I quit. And as I'm leaving, I'm thinking, <laughs> if this is a job, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> So I stopped at Manpower on the way home and registered with them. And the next day I got, this was on a Thursday, and the next day I got a call that they had a long-term temp position starting on Monday with a company called Pansafa. Um, uh, and praise the Lord, I mean, who would, that was just, that was a miracle. I love my job and I was officially hired in April. And the rest is history for the next 17 years, which 22 years. I uh, had wonderful jobs, wonderful bosses, and um, God had his hand on my life and provided for me abundantly. So you might say, but you worked hard. True, I did. I worked really hard. But others worked hard, and others had college, and others had experience. And yet, I was the one that was promoted. I cannot give anyone credit except God for my career. I have always given him the glory for that. Um, so as Pastor said in her sermon a couple weeks ago, giving back to giving, you need to give to God what... Since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. The bread which break is sharing in the body of Jesus Christ. The cup over which we gave thanks is the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, Jenna, you may play the video. It shows how you open the pre-filled cup. Now take your um, wafer. This is the body of Jesus Christ broken for you. Dip it into your grape juice. This is the blood of Jesus Christ broken for you. And partake it. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves fathers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The closing hymn this morning is Hymn of Promise. I know this is a favorite of many um, folks, in, in, especially in worship choir, but I think a lot of other people appreciate this hymn. It's such a hymn of hope, and as the pastor talked about this Sunday being a hopeful Sunday, I think the words to this um, just... Um, convey that in so many ways. So uh, the gift to you uh, at the end of the service is him of promise. In the bulb there is a flower. In the seed an apple tree. In cartoons, a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence. Seeking word and melody, 
there's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come our future. What it holds is a mystery. It's unrevealed until it's season. It's something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning. In our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. And our, in our life, eternity. In our death, there's a resurrection. And at the last, a victory. Unrevealed until it's season. Something God alone can see. I wish you all that great hope that only God can give you. Dear brothers and sisters, this day and every day, remember and see that God is good. God is our Lord. May God give you hope until Jesus comes to bring you home. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ always assure you that He will wipe away your tears and He will let you see your loved one face to face. And may the power of the Holy Spirit provide you sustenance so that you walk away until you see your loved ones now and forever. Take your candles home. Oh, the candle. Keep to do. 